Yeah, like, can yeah. We, can we, can we, like, can we be relaxed about this? Or? Oh, yeah, yeah, definitely. No, no. <laughs> That's not the love that you can say, hey, guess what? You can take this tonight, take this love home. You are the only person stopping you. How do you know that you trust that person? You see her, she sees you, and the chemistry's there, and it's just bang, it's on. And I said, so hang on, hang on, what are you saying? You're saying that tomorrow you're gonna turn into a bitch? That happens, that's real. I've kept love letters. You know, you're just doing what you do, you lucky son of a bitch or whatever. Love never dies. My name's Nathan Hill. I'm an actor, writer, producer, director. Absolutely not. <laughs> no, no way. Um, uh, when, when, you, when you talk about the, the one, um, I think, uh, like anybody, you know, as a, as a child or a teenager or whatever, I, I suppose I had the, that, that fantasy that that, that that was real and held on to it like really tightly for as long as I could. And in actual fact, um, didn't sort of give myself to any other girls because I was looking for the one. And uh, that went, when that didn't happen, I, I suppose my uh, fantasy like everyone else has crashed and then I decided that maybe life was about going out and trying different people in different relationships and that that, that perhaps is more living yeah. than you know limiting yourself to one relationship you know I don't know how much you can grow by being in one relationship No, I, I would consider getting married, but I just don't know uh, who that would be to. And I, and I don't, like, I, I've asked friends of mine that are married, you know, how did you know that she was the one? And, and they've said to me, oh, I just knew. I just had this feeling. Um, I don't, like, I personally haven't had that feeling. I've had other feelings where I'm totally convinced that I'm absolutely besotted with this woman. However, it, you know, it's never evolved into marriage. You know, so I, I can't answer that, mm. really. Yeah. You know. Um, I would say because I'm involved in the arts that, uh, you know, it, it, it is already a bit outside of the norm. So, you know, your lifestyle is different. Your, you know, your, fr your frame of mind is different. Your thoughts are different. Um, I would say I, I'm lucky that I, I've got a family that understands what I want to do, which is, which is create. Um, I'm sure they, at some point, do that again. I'm sure at some point, <laughs> I'm sure at some point they, uh, probably wished that, you know, I had married my first girlfriend or my second girlfriend or something like that, because obviously parents, what they want for you at the end of the day is security and to me, that is a cop out. That's too easy, you know. Like to me, life's more about risk and 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 pain and and then uh, joy after the pain. Do you know? I'm going to be totally flat out honest here, and I'm going to say that the the first few girlfriends I had was completely based on looks. Okay. Now, being you know, being a guy, being very visual. You know, men are visual, whereas women are a lot more emotional. And uh, I think, you know, being sort of a young, hungry guy, I wanted, you know, I wanted certain things, and and to have, you know, a, a stunning girl by my side was one of those things. Um, then I realised that uh, those relationships don't last very long because there's, you know, you don't you don't have the personality that 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 you wanted, perhaps. Um, and so I, then I, I suppose I've spent a long time trying to find, you know, a girl that, that um, you know, has the personality that I like and try to put the look second. However, like everybody will, will say, if you've got both, then you've hit the jackpot, yeah? Yeah, good question. Definitely I would say that for like a long time, like we're talking years, uh, you know, I would be attracted to a girl and I would chase her and, and, you know, to the point where, like, she would have no choice but to go out with me. And, uh, 
that you know that was fun but i i had such a good run in fact my friend you know my male friends would say to me i don't know how you do it and it 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 basically got silly where (laughs) um it was like how you know how attractive a girl can you can you be with sort of thing it almost became kind of like a subconscious competition or something like that a bit of a game and so you know I would do that and I'd seek out these beautiful girls and then I'd take her to whatever party was was happening at the time and my mates would be like I can't believe you've done it again and it got to this ridiculous point but I thought at some point I'm going to crash and then I did fall for this really attractive girl with a beautiful personality Um, but then she she got sick of me and I knew that was going to happen but you know we're talking like 10 years we're talking like a 10 year roll of like all these awesome relationships awesome girls whatever and then bang you know it just kind of hit and that hurt me and so then I had to reassess the entire scenario now that probably probably does sound a little bit cliche but you have to go through it and that's the other thing I've learned about love and relationships is that it doesn't matter what someone will say to you or tell you is the go you still have to go through the motions Yeah, yeah, I do. I think that I think that women know women know what love is, and it's kind of it's kind of simple. And I think it's guys that don't quite understand simplicity. Okay, so it 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 sort of becomes frustrating. It's like you know when when you look at a, a couple that's in love and and they're doing well. There's, there's this nice balance because they both understand that, that, that there is this love. But then I think what happens is, is you, get, um, you get boredom or you get ego or you get uh, temptation or what, whatever it is that, that might come at, at either partner. But I think that women, basically at the end of the day, are stronger than men. So when those temptations come in, it's usually the guys that, that stuff it up first, yeah? My idea of love, I think, is that there are many different kinds of love. I would say there is the love that you have for your your pet, dog or cat or whatnot. That's you know a warm, fuzzy kind of love. Then there's obviously the love that you've got for your family, which is a bit more grounded. It's a bit more. It's almost in your blood. It's a respect as well. Then there's there's the lust love, which is like when you see someone and they're they're so hot, they they just do it for you, and you want to and you want to you want to be with them. That's a different kind of love. But, but I think the love that, that I like is the love that grows over a long time. Perhaps it's like a girlfriend or even a, a male friend that you've known you know, for 10 or 20 years. Usually the people that have like gone through things with you in your life, important moments in your life that you can look back and say, hey, she was there, she was there, she was there. You know, and that love that grows over a long time. I think that's probably the most special. But that's obviously the one that is not served to you on a silver platter that's not the love that you can say hey guess what you can take this tonight take this love home you can't do that can you you can do that in one night of lust like if you go out and pick up and think that you're madly in love with this person because you picked them up that's in a moment but that's got nothing that has no weight over the love that might have built over years and years and years um this is going to sound really gay and all the guys are going to hate me saying this. <laughs> but, but I was listening recently to that song by Whitney Houston, which, which was um, the greatest love of all is, is, is in loving yourself. And there is actually a lot to that because I think the more you love yourself, the more someone else is going to love you. So ultimately, love is all about yourself and the, one, you know, the, the person that you are. And if you're comfortable with yourself... Um, then, then th- 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 this will come to you. You know, the love from someone else will come to you. Uh, like a lot of my friends have said to me, I don't know how you do it, Nath. You're not exactly, uh, you know, a, a, a Baywatch guy. You're not exactly Arnold. You know, I, like I don't have the muscles. I don't have the cliche, you know, physicalities that a lot of guys that apparently are studs would have. Okay, but but I've done very well with with girls and I think it's purely based on that fact that I know who I am and I'm confident and at the end of the day that's what you know that's what women want they want their male to protect them 
to, to, to show them the way that someone they can learn from. These things are more important, you know, than, I mean, come on, even great sex, right? Physical sex after a couple of months of every night does start to get boring. Um, it's interesting because a lot of uh, male friends and sometimes girlfriends as well, they, they'll ring me up for you know, certain advice, whether it's relationship advice or, or usually just sort of life stuff. And, and I think it's because uh, I've been very lucky in the fact that my mother's a psychologist, so I've learned from her. Um, and when I was in, even when I was in school, uh, year 10, I think it was year 10, 11 and 12, I did sociology and English and drama, you know, they were my majors. And quite often I was the only male in the class, you know, so I'd come out of those classes and the guys would say to me, oh, you know, you girl, why are you doing these, you know, fluff subjects or whatever? And I'd say, hang on a second, while you're out there hammering nails or polishing some, you know, carburetor, <laughs> I've, I've got 20 girls at my disposal and I'm getting to know them and they're getting to know me and I'm going out this weekend, I've got dates lined up, what are you doing? Do you know what I mean? So it was, but, but not just not being a smart ass, but actually, um, you know, enjoying those subjects as well. I think that's helped a lot about, you know, um, you know, hu human interaction or, you know, being able to be in multiple relationships and not worry about it afterwards, like to not be so scarred. Like, I, I'm, I'm, I'm still amazed sometimes at how scarred people are when they come out of a relationship. Because I'm like, what was the big deal, you know? You know, studying sociology and, and English drama or whatnot, I mean, it's it definitely uh, the bonuses of that were getting to know girls, you know, especially as a, as a teenager as you're developing. But, but, being, but looking at women seriously as people, not as opposed to pieces of meat or whatever, which is, you know, seems to be, you know, typically a male thing. But, you know, particularly in, uh, in, in Melbourne or whatnot, when our, our basically our religion is football, you know. So that's one thing. The other thing also is that my father's an ex-minister, he's an ex-priest uh, who's, uh, who's actually been to Russia and been ordained as an Orthodox priest and come back here. So, um, you know, very spiritual background as a child growing up. Um, that all ended um, in my late teens when my parents unfortunately got divorced. Um, and then he left the, the priesthood and, and, and mum went on to, to do her, uh, her masters or whatnot in um, psychology. But also I must say that having parents of div that have divorced has also been an exceptional learning uh, situation because now, in fact, at, no, sorry, not now, at that point, I was immediately, you know, forced into the situation to look at them as people not mum, dad, people, and then I, I was able to make the decision, do I like these people? Do you know what I mean? Because it's not like this happy family anymore, it's separated. So, um, you know, it's sort of being forced to grow up a lot quicker, and I think at that point, you, you know, you sort of say to yourself, okay, well, I'm just going to go out there and, and take the gloves off because, uh, you know, what, what, what is this world? You know, what, what is this stage that, or this theatre that you and I are in, and what do we want to do with this lifetime? Do you know? Mm -hmm. So... Being in, in hard situations, um, you know, and I suppose coming out of divorce, that's really on the icing on the cake for the amount of stories and situations that I've been in that would seriously warp your head, that, that make you start to question reality, which I think gives you a confidence, perhaps back then it was a false sense of security, but now I know it's a fact, that through struggle and pain, you come to these realizations that it doesn't matter, nothing matters. So then you have much more confidence about going out and getting what you want. And if that's a girl that you've always been attracted to, or in your case, a guy you've always been attracted to, then, then what's stopping you from going out there and trying it? What's stopping you from giving it a shot? You are the only person stopping you. Mm. Yeah, definitely, definitely. I think... Um, you know, as I say, being forced to look at them as individuals and say, okay, well, here's two people that have been married for 20 years and have three children and, and seem to have this, you know, perfect kind of, you know, fairy tale um, relationship. Now it's all ending. Why is that happening? What pushed them to that? Um, what, what, are the, you know, what are the consequences for me? 
and obviously, you know, more pain or whatever from, you know, different situations, then you, you know, your love changes, definitely. Then you have to reassess the love. Now, it's funny, isn't it? Because you reassess that love because that's family, because you know you're probably going to have to have some sort of contact with them until the day you die. But if you had the choice, would you? If you had the money and the career and the partner that you wanted and all these other things, would you really need family? The scariest thing is that when you are in love with someone and, and they tell you that they're in love with you as well and you believe that this love is mutual, when you break down a relationship, this is basically what it is. There's you, there's the person, and then there's the relationship. Now, I have to work on it, she has to work on it, and then that is what we both make it. Now, I, this happened to me a couple of times where I've been going out with someone for like more than a year or two years, and I think that all the work I'm putting into this relationship is valid, and that I believe this is what the relationship is. But then when we break up, I realize that she wasn't actually doing the other half of the work, or what she was doing was a different idea to the love that I thought we had, and that's devastating. Mm. Totally. So you have to be careful, don't you? Mm. Because if you don't, if you don't really know, if, if you, <laughs> I mean, this is about trust, man. Love's all about trust. How do you know that you trust that person? Like I've even had times in my life where I've been so confident and so trusting in myself, but I'm still a little bit paranoid. So how are you going to trust the other person when they say to you, I love you? Yeah. Trust me. You're like, do I trust myself? And what's the, you know, and what, what's going to be, what's the catch? What's the, I mean, obviously there's rewards, but you know, I basically, I think, I think basically you're asking yourself the question is that, are you prepared to take the risk and do you want to get hurt? Now, I've got a lot of girlfriends that are brokenhearted because they took risks time and time again and every time they've been let down and so they just don't take the risk anymore. They've decided they don't want love. They want a career or they want to go and travel or they, they want to lock themselves in a room and read Daniel Steele or whatever. I'm just mucking around. They want, it, they want to lock themselves in a room and read. But, but that's a question because you have to ask yourself, you know, is this person worth it? Do I want to love this person? And if I get hurt, which may happen, um, is it going to be worth it? Yeah, I mean, I think it's basically like life. I think it's a, it's a bit of a scales thing. You know, what goes up must come down. Um, if you are having this incredible experience with this person, um, what's the bad day going to be like? Do you know? Like you've got to ask yourself, not what's the price, it's not like there's a catch, but, but you, you've got to kind of be ready for everything and anything. Mm. It's risk taking. Mm. I mean, I, I'd, I'd say to myself right now, what, what do I really, really, really want? And, and it's like right now in this moment on today, I don't really, really want a relationship. I want something else which has got to do with creative arts. I know I can go and pursue that and that there'll be risks to that as well. Do you know, it's like anything you choose to do, there's going to be rewards and then there's going to be hardships. That is life. So is life love? Okay, there has been so many girlfriends of mine in the past that uh, I've gotten to know as friends first. And some, and, and sometimes that's evolved into a relationship or whatnot, but time and time again, the girls that have said to me, um, I really, you know, I'm really attracted to you, there's a chemistry or whatnot, but I want to get to know you first and I want to be your friend, that's simply coming from somebody that's been hurt. You know? Now, that's fair enough. You know, if, it's, it's sort of a gauge, it's sort of a test for girls, isn't it? Because you could say that to me and then I've got to take my time. And then you're watching how patient I am and you're figuring out, did I actually just want to get down your pants? Or do, do I really, really like you? Do you know? And it, this becomes a game as well for guys because like they, they, might, they might have said that to um, you know, five different girls. 
you know, so it's like, oh yeah, I'm, you know, I'm, I'm playing on her slowly, I'm playing on the next one, I'm playing on the next one, oh, it's cool, I might get laid by that one next week, and then that's cool, because then the next one will lay me like two weeks after that, it's ongoing, you know, like that, that's a whole game in itself, but um, uh, I, I respect it, I do, I think, I think, <laughs> I think, um, yeah, I think getting to know someone is definitely you know, a smart thing. However, there is nothing better than going out to a party or a club or whatnot and having that moment where you see her, she sees you, and the chemistry's there, and it's just bang, it's on. Okay, that's exciting. You know, I'm, I'm, I'm a guy with a crazy imagination, and I, and I love weird kind of surreal experiences and situations and sometimes I've put myself in them just on purpose. So that sort of stuff, like the spare of the moment thing, I'm all for it, absolutely. However, it's not, it's, it's never long lasting, is it? You know, whereas someone you've got to know, um, you know, beforehand, before you've, you know, become a couple, like what I was saying before about um, this sort of stage love where it progresses over time, that's a different story. Yeah, absolutely. I mean, I've I've been I've been so wrapped up in love sometimes that I that that they, you know that I've put that person on a pedestal. Do you know, like they've come first. But then I've had other situations where I've had a girl say to me, "Hey, you know what? It's me or your career." And at that point, I've gone, "There's the door," you know. But but definitely, there's been moments where um, where I'll, I'll put that person that I love so you know so dearly at the time first absolutely i mean to me it's like if you're in love that's number one then family then friends then acquaintances you know like let, let's you know let, let's sort of get smart about it that's how it should be but then sometimes i've gone out with girls that have put their family first then their best girlfriend they went to school with then me you know and i'm like but hang on we're in love this is the moment and then there's another uh, there's another argument about the honeymoon period I've had relationships where that, like, what is it? What do people say? Three months? Is it three months, the honeymoon period? I've had honeymoon periods that have lasted a year. And then I've said to myself, well, this, this is an awesome relationship. But then the girl turns around and she says, I think that the honeymoon period's over. And I said, so hang on, hang on. What are you saying? You're saying that tomorrow you're going to turn into a bitch? <laughs> you know? It's ridiculous. So... I think, I think you have to make the decision. I think when you say, oh, you know, are you going to put your love for your partner above everybody else? I think you kind of have to. But I think that it depends on the situation. I mean, if, if you and I were in love and we were embraced and it was like, you know, the, the, the moon was full and it was just on and it was incredible, but then the phone rang and my mum was like on her way to hospital... Would I jump out of bed with you to go and visit my mum in hospital because she was, she broke her arm? Well, I probably would, wouldn't I? I'd probably have to. <laughs> Look, I tell you what, I'm actually a very romantic guy and I, I love wine, I love picnics, I love going out on dates, I love the whole thing. Like the amount of time I've, time I've spent where I've actually taken time out from what I'm doing with a new partner and then gone out on like two, three, four month escapade of just doing the whole romance thing. You know, like I actually get into it. I think that's probably, I'm a bit, I'm, I'm, I'm sort of separate from a lot of other people. Like when I'm talking majority because I'm an artist, because I'm creative and I go with the flow, I can do that and that's exciting. Um, but do I believe in, in romance? Is that, is that what you're asking me? Well, the only thing I can think of right now is that I'm actually annoyed because I'm, I am romantic. And the last girl that I was with kept saying to me, I, I just want romance. And I'd be sitting at a candlelit dinner somewhere going, you know, like, I, and I just brought her flowers or whatever. I'm, it's kind of, you know what I mean? Like so, some, uh, I'm sorry, but you know, some women, they just, when they've got what they want, they can't see it. You know, and it's the same for guys as well. It's like, you know, you, 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 you can't tell what you had until you've lost it, you know? And it doesn't matter if sometimes you're beating someone's face into the, into the dinner table to wake up, you know? Like, it, it's, people are funny, do you know? People, 
you know, they when they want things and, and then they get it and then it's, they can't see it, you know? You've got to open your eyes. What are you asking me though? Do I want romance over something else? Or? Yeah. Yeah, because romance is the moment. I mean, they're the moments. That's like the honeymoon period. That's where you have that interaction. And you, I mean, you know, it, you, you're kind of slowly building up to something else, aren't you? I'd say I've definitely been infatuated or, 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 or lusted after someone many times. Like, you know, a lot of times. But I don't know about love. I've thought that I've been in love, but then realized after the relationship's broken up that it wasn't love. And, and, and that's happened like so many times, I've lost count. So now I don't really know what love is anymore. Or the impression that I had of love Changes. is completely changed and it's out there and I don't even know anymore. That's being completely honest. I yeah. don't know. But I, I think that's better. It's a better place to be in than having not had those experiences. I mean, I don't want to be naive. I don't want to go out with the first girl that I've taken out and I'm 18 and I marry her and I go, I'm in love, but I'm a naive, you know, uneducated, un unworldly, you know, kind of small brained, you know, human being. Do you know, like, I mean, life's about experience. And there's definitely been relationships I've had where um, I've, you know, I've, I've known that the girl's seeing someone else as well as me, or maybe a couple of guys, or maybe she's not technically going out, it's just we're on together, you know, and it's like, I have girlfriends that, you know, travel the world, and then they'll come back and they'll ring me, and I know exactly why they're calling, but I also know that next month they're going to be gone again. So, you know, do you say to yourself, okay, well, here I am, I'm this human being, I'm, I'm whatever, um, I'll just take what happens as it, as it comes, I'll take, out, take anything as it comes and I'll deal with it in the moment. I know that's something my mother would say as a psychologist, she would say take every day one step at a time and appreciate what comes to you because really you don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. And that's a problem with lock-in relationships. If you get married and you're locked in, you don't know what's gonna happen tomorrow. You might have known someone for a year and then lived with them for a year and then gotten married to them. You've known them for three years, but then something happens that you didn't know about because they were hiding a dark secret and your whole world changes. That happens, that's real. Can we talk about the letters? The letters. The letters, you know, I don't know why I've done this, but I've, I've, I've kept love letters from all the uh, girls that have written to me. Um, quite a few in there. <laughs> there, are, there is quite a few. Um, and the cards and whatnot. <laughs> There's like overseas mail in here. Um, look, I'm not going to pull them all out, but there's, there's a lot of them. And um, I don't know what it was. It was just a thing where I, uh, you know, I, some, of the, some of the things written in here are incredible. And, and I thought, uh, you know, I'm, I'm the sort of guy, I'm sort of a bit... Um, uh, sentimental sometimes or I kind of, you know, I kind of collect things in there. <laughs> and so I started putting these letters into a drawer and before you knew what, you know, there was, a, there, was a, there was a box full or whatever. But I kind of keep these because I actually honestly think to myself, if, uh, if I'm like doomed to be single, you know, like if, uh, if I keep, you know, if I don't find the one, then at least I've got the memories. I mean, I can see myself as a, as a bachelor or whatnot, or maybe when I'm in a nursing home is probably when I'll go back through those letters and I'll look back on my whole life, probably even when I am, if I am married, you know, I'm probably gonna look back on those one day and I'm gonna go through them all from the first date to the last date and see the progression and see whether there was any similarities in those letters and see if, you know, several girls liked me for the same reason you know, maybe that can help me out to see what qualities they did like, or maybe who, who am I, who, who I might be, that sort of stuff. So um, uh, there's been moments where I've just thought, I want to burn all these letters, you know, like when I've been really upset, like when I've got, you know, 20 letters from the one girl and I've been in love with her, and I'm glad I've kept them, but then when, when I break up with them, I'm like, I'm just going to burn everything I own that had to do with that girl to move on. But sometimes, you know, I think you should keep stuff, you know. So, 
yeah, they've, they've lasted this long. I've actually moved house 18 times. And, uh, you know, it's, it's a lot because I'm, I'm not that old. Um, and uh, these letters have, have, have managed to, to travel with me, whereas I've lost a lot of other things. Um, yeah, I suppose, I'm, I suppose I'm just sentimental in that way. You know, I like to remember the good things. So often, you know, we, we, we just concentrate on the negatives as human beings. And uh, I just like to remember the positives. And I, I suppose I, I feel kind of lucky that I've had so many incredibly different rela different relationships and, you know, um, experiences with so many beautiful, you know, gifted, talented, creative people, you know, and, and been blessed in that way that I've had all these awesome experiences. And I'd much rather that than be walking around the supermarket of Safeway with my trolley and my girl that I met when I was 14, 10 years later, talking about what crossword we were gonna do that night when we got into bed. The greatest love story of all? Mm. Far out. Dracula. Love never dies. That's the greatest love story of all. Dracula is not a horror. It's a love story. Is that what you mean? Is that is that? Yeah. Are we talking film? Are we talking you know fiction? Are We're we anything. are we talking anything. real life? See, I also think there was a film that came out in the seventies um, called Love Story. Do you you know? It? Yeah. Um, you know that's incredible. You know, it's sort of that that um, you know undying perfect match, real love, but then. One of the one of the people is uh, one of the partners is dying, you know. It's that it's that whole thing, and I think what I've, I've discovered as well, just from talking to you today, is that that you know a lot of love is about life, and it's about death, and it's about um, the experiences. Exactly, exactly. It's it's uh, lo you know love is life, I suppose, mm. in a way. But I think Dracula. I think you take a guy that apparently. You know, uh, you know, does really have this true love? You know, whose whose partner has suicided because she believes he's dead, so she's damned. And then he has to curse God, and then he searches for her, and he finds her. You know, hundreds of years later. You know that that sort of whole reincarnation thing. I just think that's incredible. That's got to be the most passionate. You know, I mean, you you look at Dracula as well, and it, you know, there's something sexy about Dracula. Do you know? Every woman loves a badass. That's the other line I love. Uh, a badass makes a girl's um, heart beat faster. Mm. Cool. There was because there was once there was one thing. I met this woman. She was uh, probably twenty years older than me. It was an Italian woman, and she was quite attractive. And she said to me, "Are you the sort of guy that walks around topless at home, or are you the guy that takes your gear off just before you get into bed to make love to your woman?" And I said, I'm the guy that takes his shirt off slowly when I've got you in the bedroom. And she went, you're my kind of guy, you know? Now that's going more from like a gentleman perspective, you know, like a kind of an old school, like let's, let's unravel piece by piece. Let's like, it's almost like a ritual or something. But then like my last girlfriend was like, you know, this summer we're just going to like walk around. You're going to be in tank tops every day. I'm going to, you know, and I sort of thought, yeah, okay, yeah, whatever. But that, that's a whole other approach. You know what I mean? It's, I mean, let's, not, let's not kid ourselves here when we say that love is not just about the mind. It's about the body. There has to be the chemistry. There has to be that physical attraction. And, and, but there's something more than that. It's, it's like a cherry on top. There's a lid on it. Um, and, it and if you connect on that level with the person, then anything else is possible. You know what I mean? So I've seen incredible relationships where um, the partners aren't, aren't sexually attracted to each other, but because they love each other so much, they'll go and do something for their partner to make them more attractive to the, to the, to the other partner for that reason. Do you know what I mean? Like the, the love, and love can be shown in many different ways. You know, it can be a, a very uh, subtle thing. Now, Radio Samurai, the most fun I've had when dealing with love or, uh, you know, having been a guy that's, you know, gone out and, 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 and been with a lot of girls and stuff like that, there was a mate of mine who 
uh, was complete opposite of me. And, uh, you know, I went to an old boys school and really just didn't know, even really know, you know, how to, how to talk to women, you know, just completely, the complete opposite. Um, and he basically modeled this character on me for his feature film. And then I played this, this entrepreneur, this, this Casanova character that in the movie basically picks up every single girl in the film. And, uh, and I just had an absolute ball with that. You know, I can't, I can't deny it that, uh, you know, being able to play just that extension of myself in a full length film that, you know, that, that gets released, that was, that was incredible, you know. Um, obviously my uh, close friends will just say to me, you're not acting, you know, you're just doing what you do, you're lucky son of a bitch or whatever. But, um, you know, that, that was awesome, you know. And this is this is the thing too, because you get onto you, you know you think about someone like Hugh Hefner for example. Now straight away people are going to say this guy is you know is a sleazy old man. He's a dirty freak. He's got Playboy bunnies running around his house. Blah 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 blah. But then there's another side to him, which is that this guy's actually taken women that without him would never actually get on the cover of a magazine. He's found those people that actually want that, and he's doing them a service. He's cashing in on them, they're cashing in back off him. It's a win-win situation. You know, so see people see, you know, the outsides or the shell bef like quite often before they've actually looked at the yolk, you know, that's inside the egg. And that yolk sometimes is, is so different from what you perceived it to be. You know what I mean? That's a metaphor, obviously, but there's, you know, this is the same for relationships, isn't it? Because you're looking, when you're going out with someone and you look happy, I'm looking at the shell of your relationship, but I don't know what's going on inside. Your partner probably doesn't even know what's going on inside. They'd like to think they do, you know? And then you, you've got to find out if that yoke that's inside you is love. How do you know? How do you really, really know?